بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم إنك لمن المرسلين على صراط مستقيم تنزيل العزيز الرحيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون إنا جعلنا في أعناقهم أغلالا فهي إلى الأذقان فهم مقمحون وجعلنا من بين أيديهم سدا ومن خلفهم سدا فأخشيناهم فهم لا يبصرون وسواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب فبشره بمغفرة وأجر كريم إنا نحن نحيي الموتى ونكتب ما قدموا وآثارهم وكل شيء أحصيناه في إمام مبين واضرب لهم مثلا أصحاب القرية إذ جاءها المرسلون إذ أرسلنا إليه اثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون قالوا ما أنتم إلا بشر مثلنا وما أنزل الرحمن من شيء إن أنتم إلا تكذبون قالوا ربنا يعلم إنا إليكم لمرسلون وما علينا إلا البلاء المبين قالوا إنا تطيرنا بكم لئن لم تنتهوا لنرجمنكم وليمسنكم منا عذاب أليم قالوا طائركم معكم أئن ذكرتم بل أنتم قوم مسرفون وجاء من أقصى المدينة رجل يسعى قال يا قوم اتبعوا المرسلين اتبعوا من لا يسألكم أجرا وهم مهتدون وما لي لا أعبد الذي فطرني وإليه ترجعون أأتخذ من دونه آلهة إن يردني الرحمن بضر لا تغن عني شفاعتهم شيئا ولا ينقذون إني إذا لفي ضلال مبين إني آمنت بربكم فاسمعون قيل ادخل الجنة قال يا ليت قومي يعلمون بما غفر لي ربي وجعلني من المكرمين وما أنزلنا على قومه من بعده من جند من السماء وما كنا منزلين إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم خامدون يا حسرة على العباد ما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون ألم يروا كم أهلكنا قبلهم من القرون أنهم إليهم لا يرجعون وإن كل لما جميع لدينا محضرون وآية لهم الأرض الميتة أحييناها وأخرجنا منها حبا فمنه يأكلون وجعلنا فيها جنات من نخيل وأعناب وفجرنا فيها من العيون ليأكلوا من ثمره وما عملته أيديهم أفلا يشكرون سبحان الذي خلق الأزواج كلها مما تنبت الأرض ومن أنفسهم ومما لا يعلمون وآية لهم الليل نسلخ, نسلخ منه النهار فإذا هم مظلمون 
والشمس تجري مستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم والقمر قدرناه منازل حتى عاد كالغرجون القديم لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون وآية لهم أنا حملنا ذريتهم في الفلك المشحون وخلقنا لهم من مثله ما يركبون وإن نشأ نغرقهم فلا صريخ لهم ولا هم ينقذون إلا رحمة منا ومتاعا إلى حين وإذا قيل لهم اتقوا ما بين أيديكم وما خلفكم لعلكم ترحمون وما تأتيهم من آية من آيات ربهم إلا كانوا عنها مؤرضين وإذا قيل لهم أنفقوا مما رزقكم الله قال الذين كفروا قال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا أنطعم من لو يشاء الله أطعمه إن أنتم إلا في ضلال مبين ويقولون متى هذا الوعد إن كنتم صادقين ما ينظرون إلا صيحة واحدة تأخذهم وهم يخصمون فلا يستطيعون توصية ولا إلى أهلهم يرجعون ونفخ في الصور فإذا هم من الأجداث إلى ربهم ينسلون قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون إن كانت إلا صيحة واحدة فإذا هم جميع لدينا محضرون فاليوم لا تظلم نفس شيئا ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبدوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون اصلوها اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نختم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتشهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكسه في الخلق أفلا يعقلون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم من ما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم 
إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو خصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأن قائمة فضحكت فبشرت شرنا بإسحاق ومن إسحاق يعقوب قالت يا ويلتا
صلوات على محمد وعلى محمد محمد وعلى محمد صلوات کہاں رو کے باقی نے عابد سے بابا سکینہ کو کیوں چھوڑ کر جا رہے ہے بابا یہاں پر بلا کا کو کیوں چور کر جا رہے کہا رو کے باقی نیا بیت سے بابا ہا دیکھا ہے میں نے سفر میں یہ منظر جہاں پانی ہوتا تھا اس کو میسر تو خود اپنے ہی سے کا پانی ہمیشہ گرا تھی تھی یہ آپ کی بیریوں پر میسر ہے اب ہم کو پانی تو پیاسا سکینہ کو کیوں چور کر جا رہے کہارو کے باقی نیابے سے بابا جھکائے ہوئے اپنا سر رو رہی ہے رہائی کی سن کر خبر رو رہی ہے ترپتی ہے دادی ربابے سے بابا کہ اممہ بھی تھا میں جگر رو رہی ہے بتائیں گے کیا گھر انہوں نے یہ پوچھا سکینہ کو کیوں چھوڑ کر جا رہے کہا رو کے باقی نیا بیت سے بابا مجھے یاد ہے خود یہ کہتے تھے دادا مدینہ ہے اس کے سبب سے مدینہ کہ میری نظر میں وہ گھر گھر نہیں ہے نظر جس میں آئے نہ مجھ کو سکینہ نہ اس کے سوا پھر بسے گا مدینہ سکینہ کو کیوں چھوڑ کر جا رہے کہاں رو کے باقی نیا بیت سے بابا
मदीना हो या शाम कर बो बला हो के बाजार दरबार का मर हला हो सदाकत सितम ने जेला है मिल कर तो फिर क्यों ना ये मेरे दिल की सदा हो मुझे भी यही छोर ना मेरे बाबा सकीना को क्यों छो कर जा रहे कहारो के बाके ने आबे से बाबा हे बाबा यहाँ पर बला का सकीना को क्यों छो कर जा रहे कहारो के बाके ने आबे से बाबा हम द्वार मोहम्मद सलवार Uh, we shall now have uh, the lecture tonight, inshallah. Uh, before we invite Sheikh Arif, can I please ask you all to move as far forward as possible with the uh, three consecutive salawats? الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا ان هدانا الله والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين شفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وحبيب قلوبنا ابي القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين وأصحابه المنتجبين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته أعظم الله جورنا وجوركم بمسابنا بأبي عبد الله الحسين عليه الصلاة والسلام Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the marhumin for whose isal is sawab. We are gathered here today. May Allah elevate their souls in the proximity of his own self and in the proximity of the blessed prophet and the family of our blessed prophet. And with that, shall we pray a surah fatiha and our heartiest condolences to Ramzan Bai and the family for our dear sister Farida Bai that we Lay to rest today and all our marhumin al Fatiha. Bismillah <laughs> Rahman Rahim. Continuing with the relationship that Imam Hussein has with his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we stated that he sees himself without a claim, without a right at the outset of his journey of finding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes to this point of understanding that whatever God has destined for him is the best that can be destined. He sees the troubles, the tribulations, the tests 
are from the one who knows better. He acquires this level of trust with God and understands that the purpose for which he has been created is something known by God and God is driving him to that end and to that purpose. So therefore, he pleads with Allah and he says, Oh Allah, allow me not to want the hastening of a decree that you have chosen to delay, nor cause me to want the delay of a destiny that you have chosen to hasten. If this is the test that you have destined for me at this point, then if I were to want you to delay it, it shows my lack of trust in your discretion. It's a wonderful state to be in. And then he says, O oh Lord, bring the best out for me through this test. I just want to reca recap on this slightly as we move on to the next stage. Sometimes we are troubled by the tests of time. But Allah has an aim for us, for us to grow through that. Sometimes Allah tests us with poverty, but the one who can trust Allah in poverty has truly arrived at the purpose of life. For knowing that today I do not rely upon my own earnings, nor upon my business, nor upon my ability, but I rely on Allah instead. And that becomes the wealth unending. When Allah tests us with the lack of force, power, friends, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to bring us to a level of unending strength. When that fears causes no more fear in our souls, when we become needless of support, when we become needless of armies, imagine, God has brought us to a pedestal of strength after which there is no weakness. Otherwise you find kings in fortified castles fearing all night long, either at the approach of an enemy or at a blood clot seizing them in the depth of the night. So when Allah tests us, the deeper the test, the greater the test, it means the greater is the substance of that person. We said this previously, that it takes a Nadal to make a Federa. You don't find great men just popping up. Great people become through severe tests. Can we have salawat, please? <clears throat> So Hussein ibn Ali here understands this fully and does not ruin the whole process. If we were to complain to God, then what is happening here is it's a display of displeasure with God's decree, which then is translated as lack of attainment of purpose because we have already stated that inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raja'un we are returning to Allah Allah is taking us back to himself and we are saying Lord stop I do not trust your taking me back but Allah said oh, but Hussein is saying oh Lord you are my king you are my master you are my all if you have created me and made me in such, the, such a best way when I wasn't shay'an madhkura, when I wasn't even worthy of mention, when you have created such beautiful heavens and earth, when you have brought about such beautiful balance, everything is precise. Oh Lord, should I say now that I know better than you when you plan my life out? It is but a day or two that I'm going to live, or a year or two, or 10 years or 20. Eventually I have to come to you. Hussein understands it very differently. He has come to that stage in his life where he does not want to challenge God in the decree of God. Then he arrives beautifully beyond this stage and the greater the number of challenges Hussein had, the greater he rejoiced. My goodness, what a man he was. The more severe and bitter the tests became, the more godly he became. As we will see today, how he embraces God. Then we came to a stage where not only is there trust, he begins to find a friend in God. Now it is no longer a question, O oh Lord, I understand from my mind that you decree the best, that you know the best, but O oh Lord, I need a friend at that deep level that I can be one with. 
I need somebody with whom I can share. Even when I accept your decree, there is something in there that is hidden in me that I do want to say that I have trusted my God, but I feel a little bit resentful. There is something in there that is still hidden from me and hidden from you. It is open to you. It is hidden in me and I'm not willing to share it with you. Oh Lord, become a friend of mine with whom I can sit alone, with whom I can talk, with whom I can share so fully that nothing about me is hidden from you, that I am an open book for you. And he says at that point, when he arrives at that point of enlightenment, that, O oh Lord, how shall I say anything to you when whatever I'm going to say is apparent to you before I speak it out? O oh Lord, how shall I complain of any state to you when all states are available to you to view even before I can begin to complain about them? He very unashamedly says, O oh Lord, I complain to you. At one point he said, O oh Lord, I accept everything you give me. But here now he's accepting everything and yet he is complaining. I need a friend to complain to. Oh friend, it is very difficult for me what they are doing. He said in yesterday's dua that we were talking about, he said, Oh Allah, I complain to you the distance between me and my homeland. Oh Allah, I complain to you of what my enemies are doing to me. Oh Lord, the way they have humiliated me. Of course, he did not use those words, but Hawan, that's this humble state of mind in front of my enemies. He then speaks with a friend. And Allah becomes that confident of God. Knowing, uh, Allah becomes that confident friend of Hussein. Hussein knowing that this friend of mine will not judge me. Now, when Allah becomes that proximate to us, what happens is, we begin to free our own selves because we are in an eternal captivity. We call ourselves free men. There is no freedom here. These are slaves. Nay, they are not slaves of body. These are sleeping people who are not even awake. These are slaves of role play. These are not even awakened people, poor people. It's a state, pitiful state. Everything that is happening in this world, our fight for the haq. <laughs> I'm saying, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, Kalimatul haq, yuradu bih al batil. The Kharijis speak the truth, but what they intend through it is falsehood. What I'm saying is, the person who speaks the truth, if the truth is not here, that word of truth becomes falsehood. When I want to establish the faith of God, but God is not here, it is nothing but falsehood. It is here that we see what Hussein has taught us. Open up to God. Find yourself. Reveal yourself fully. Once you reveal yourself fully, that is when you begin to emerge in a real life. This is what Hussein teaches us. Here I am, O oh my Lord. Here I am. I have accepted your decree, but I need you beyond being a God. I need you as a wali of mine. If this thing can be incorporated within our lives, life becomes very, very simple. We say to Allah, Allah, we know what you're doing is the best, but it is difficult for me. Help me through this. Oh friend, let me talk to you about the decree of Allah. We're talking to Allah about his own decree. Oh friend, let me talk to you about the decree of God. And the friend will say, trust God. But in this case, the friend is saying, trust me, because he is God. After we pass through this stage, Hussein arrives at something that is unbeknown to us, within the prophets and the saints to this level. He begins to fall in love with Allah. When he becomes the intimate friend of God, he begins to not only reason with the situation that whatever God does is best, but begins to love God and feels God. How amazing is this? Have you ever seen a person who is torn into pieces, 
whose throat burns with thirst. But when the blade arrives at his neck, his lips bear a smile. Have you ever seen a person who is so oppressed and at that point, when the blood has oozed out of his veins, he radiates with the light of God. This is a person who has now fallen in love with Allah. How do we explain this? It is a state within. And that is why the son of Adam stands at ranks beyond the angels. The angels can never comprehend what this son of Adam is. The son of Adam can fall in love with his God and can have himself torn apart. And every drop of blood cries out, O oh Lord, this chastisement is sweeter than any paradise. Who can explain this thing? We need to experience this. It is like saying to a person, how do you know the pleasure I feel in the pain that you see? You know, often, the Azadar of Hussein Salamu Alaihi, they say to people who criticize them, that how do you know the pleasure of my Azadari when you haven't tasted the love of Hussein? People say, well, how can you strike your hand on your chest? You say, this striking of my hand, if only you knew how much pleasure it yielded. Look at the pleasure Muslim ibn Ausaja seeks. When Hussein says, what will you do tomorrow? Muslim says, by God, we should engage with them with our swords, then with our spears. Then we shall throw stones at them. Then, if the stones were to finish, we shall engage with them with our bare hands. If our ha arms are cut, and if our necks are cut, and if after that our bodies are shred into pieces, and if after that we were burned to ashes, and if after that our ashes were scattered, we will yearn from Allah to restore us once again. So that we may die for you time and again. This is the language of love. This is no longer reason. Hussein begins to melt away in his Lord so fully. I do not understand how a person can live beyond the dagger that is in the chest of Akbar. I can't understand how can a person have resolve beyond the arms of Abbas. But this is Hussein in love with his God. And this love yields pleasure at every pain that he encounters. He says, O oh Allah, you are the one who has removed all others from the hearts so that there is no one else left but you. There is no one worthy of worship in their hearts but you. No one worthy of love in their hearts but you. O oh, one who has become their pleasure and their contentment as opposed to anybody else. We see this state at times coming upon us. When people are in love, terribly in love, when a young man falls in love, Observe their state. They are so much in love, so immersed in this divine state. Of course, they are in love with their prospective partners, but they are so immersed in this divine state. Examine that state. In that state, they care not of anything. There is no dignity left in them anymore. There is no prestige left in them anymore. Love is blind. There is no black or white or tall or short or wealthy or poor. A queen falls in love with a sweeper on the road. It doesn't matter any, make any difference to her. A princess in love with a poor man. A free person in love with a slave. That love is the one that takes away every pretense. Takes away every distinction. It takes away the person from themselves and immerses them in the object of love. We see these states that they eat not, they drink not. You can make them work. They will happily do everything at that stage. It is that divine touch, that love. 
so hussein falls in love with his god to such a deep extent that oh beloved he says your choice comes before mine nay it is you there is no me left no even if there is an iota of me left oh god tear it away let it only be my beloved do you not observe his prayer before his final battle he said allahumma taraktu al khalqa turran fi hawak o lord i have abandoned the creation in your passion he looks at his children i have chosen to make them orphans o lord so that i may meet you he looks at the swords if they were to shred me to pieces o lord this heart would not yearn other than you this is that divine stage of love that hussein begins to encounter in his relationship with his god that now it is no longer a question of i am nothing in front of you or that your decree is the best decree or that friend i need you it is now a question of nothing but you it is that stage that i am not you are allow this heart to be torn into pieces so that nothing remains of me nothing but you are visible through this chest where do you think a man gets the resolve to place his chest in front of the shooting arrows as hussein does where do you think a man gets the resolve of fighting and when they say to him why do you not submit he says by god you will not find another one like me by every drop of blood that i have i shall fight you do you know why he wasn't stopping his fight not for anything but that he wanted to meet his lord in such a complete manner such a complete manner that nothing of him remains only his god remains so he cries out ya ghayat at-talibin ya muntaha amal ar-rajin o oh, the peak of those who are yearning nothing beyond you can be yearned o oh, the one who is the utmost that the ones with hope can yearn then he says ilahi ma aqrabaka minni wa ba'dani ank o lord how close you are to me and how far i am from you and it was this love that he had for hussein for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he wanted to break that distance and he saw his own being that distance and hence he gave himself so fully what he says here is something quite phenomenal fa ma alladhi yahjubuni ank he says oh lord how can anything how can anything conceal me from you he was looking into his own self and at that point he finds this particular state inside him where he begins to find allah so fully and he begins to fall in love with allah if we can understand this of imam hussein salamu alayhi then we can forge ourselves a tie with god and we can try this we just need to analyze this why are we in the turmoil in which we are because we have not understood that the only calling can we say salawat and come forward so there are some people at the back if we can analyze just a little bit we will see that all our life is spent in yearning to complete ourselves why do we th- why do you think we want health because we find health as a point that completes us why do you think we find we want wealth because wealth completes us it rids us of our insecurities why do we find we want friends and acceptance why do you think we want validation from others 
Why do you think we fall in love with women and with men? I'm not talking about men falling in love with men, yes? <laughs> I'm getting into tr a lot of trouble with these sort of loose statements. Salawat. <laughs> there comes a point in life when you are already in trouble. What difference does it make beyond this? <laughs> a man who has lost everything can't lose anymore. What difference does it make? And this is the unique point where God frees you fully. When he takes everything away from you, what else do you have to lose? What happens after that? You stand as a free man. This is the journey of Allah. This is the beautiful journey. In any case, what do we yearn? We yearn completion within ourselves. If only we knew, if only we knew that these are aspects of what we are really yearning from within. We don't want to die, do we? Because we see death as a deficiency and as an end. If only we could understand that the treasure of all treasures is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will not feel security with our business empires anymore. We will feel security with God instead. We want power. If only we understood that the power of all power is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would not be surrounded by militaries. We want companionship. If only we understood that when you put me to rest in my grave, that none of you will be there. It will be the companion of all companions, Allah. If only we understood that we want beauty and ending, and that Allah was that beauty and ending. If only we understood things differently, that what we want from within us is the absolute. And that absolute life cannot come but after tasting death. That absolute treasure cannot come but by losing all worldly treasure. That absolute companion cannot come but by the world abandoning us. If only we understood these things, we would be yearning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala differently. We would offer our chests to God as did Hussein ibn Ali. We would become a very different community. We would become community who are godly. Hussein brings that love in us. Honestly, he does. He is a divine agency, and I want to finish this tomorrow. Whoever was touched by Hussein became blind in his love. You find several instances in the story of Ashura that depicts this. You find Habib coming to him. He looks at Hussein. Although I have become old, O Hussein, yet when I glance upon you, youthful blood begins to flow within my veins. We find this in Wahab and his mother. His head is separated from his body thrown towards the camp of Hussein. She picks it up. In a rage, she throws it back. What I give in the way of Hussein, I do not take back. We find this in John, who throws away his shield and tears his shirt. And they say, oh man, have you lost your senses? Indeed, the love of Hussein has made me insane. Face the chest of the lover of Hussein who comes and offers his heart as a shield against your arrows. Hussein offers that beautiful love. And that is why it is said that this Hussein was necessary for Islam because Allah knew in his divine wisdom that people will lose sense of God altogether. Do you not see how empty the mosques have become? And do you not see how populated Hussein's member has become? Why? Because Hussein depicts a God that Islam has forgotten. Islam has remembered the God of punishment and reward. Hussein offers the God of love instead. We helplessly fall in love with Hussein ibn Ali. And we are ready to give our all to Hussein ibn Ali. This is why Hussein and the likes of Hussein are kept there. They are not Imams. 
They are the love of our lives. They do not deserve lip service. They deserve every drop of blood in our veins. They do not deserve anything less than the fullest direction within us. And if we can give all of that, then we too begin to relate to Allah in a very similar fashion. So I will say this, that by Allah, if Hussein were to ask for our heads, there would be a smile on our lips when we give them. By God, there is no doubting this. But if Hussein's God were to ask the same, there would be hesitation. And that is the reason why this man is there to enlighten these beautiful hearts towards him. I ask Hussein though, that your tribulations were great. You were in love with Allah. You gave away everything you had. But Hussein, tell me of those that you leave behind. They are less than you. The tribulations that befall upon you, O Hussein, at the death of your Asghar, brought you to your knees. You were not able to bear the death of your Asghar Hussein. But you died after that Hussein. You were killed after that. You were martyred after that. What about the mother of Asghar? She will live with the grief of losing her Hussein and her Asghar. Oh Hussein, do you see the one? who is so terribly in love with you, your sister. She does not see beyond you. She is taunting her children, Owen and Muhammad. Why are you still alive? And when you give permission to her, <laughs> she combs their hair, puts on new clothes, cleanses them. Oh, Hussein, look at the mad love she has for you. How will she live before, after you have gone? Oh, Hussein, a thought for them. It is said that Imam Sadiq said that if somebody loses somebody very dear and they do not find any comfort in their heart due to the grief tearing them apart, let them go to the graves of their loved ones and place the palms of their hands upon the dust. That will bring peace to their souls. O oh, Hussein, to whose grave should Zainab and Kulthum go? On the 11th, we see this state. From afar, Kulthum looks at the body of Hussein. As she looks at Hussein's body, inadvertent she cries out, Wa Jadda. Oh, grandfather, is this not the same Hussein who rode upon your shoulders? Is he not the same one who you adorned with endless kisses? Oh, grandfather, observe how his head has been separated from his body. How the blood oozes from his jugular veins. How the dust blows upon his body. We will say, if this was enough, then even then it would be unbearable. But what can I say, O Hussein, of what happens beyond this? These women are saddled upon camels. In their hands are their children, and at times little babies. Six to eight little children were killed beneath the feet of the raging soldiers as they looted the tent. But when the camels were driven at merciless speeds, at times the little children would fall. The mothers would look on only to see the hooves of camels trample them to death. <laughs> وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون إلهي 
إنا نسألك بحق الحسين وجده وأبيه وأمه وأخيه وتسعة المعصومين من ذريته وبنيه اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم عجل فرج إمامنا المنتظر واجعلنا من أنساره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه Let us recite Surah Fatiha for all the marhumins for whose sake we have held this majlis today and Shabir Abdul Hussein inshallah will soon mention their names to us Al-Fatiha for these marhumin and all our marhumin Al-Fatiha Matem Hussein. कैसे गले पे तेरे खंजर में चलता देखूं आखिर हुसैन माहूं कैसे गले पे तेरे खंजर में चलता देखूं आखिर हुसैन माहूं गर्दन पे रख के तेरी गर्दन पे रख के तेरी अपना गला कटा दूँगा फिर हुसैन माँ कैसे गले पे तेरे खंजर में जलता दे जब जीन से गिरे तो कई चोट लग न जाए जब जीन से गिरे तो कई चोट लग न जाए मकतल के सर जमी से मकतल के सर जमी से पत्थर को मैं हटा Oh, the 
السلام <coughs> 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 السلام عليك يا موسى بن جعفر السلام عليك علي بن موسى السلام عليك محمد بن علي السلام عليك علي بن محمد السلام عليك حسن بن علي السلام عليك يا حجة الله بن الحسن عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسهل الله مخرجك وظهورك وجعلنا الله من أعوانك وأنصارك ومن شيعتك ومن محبيك ومن المستشهدين بين يديك السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, Can I request everyone to be seated for question and answer please Uh, so can we commence tonight's question and answer with the uh, Lord Salawat Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Ali Muhammad. So I'll give us a couple of seconds to finish saying our salams to each other so we can begin our question and answer. Okay, so tonight's question and answer will be the last question and answer. We won't be having one tomorrow. Uh, so if you have any burning questions or anything that you sort of are thinking about the lecture, please ask away. So I'll be floating around for any questions. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, it's been mentioned a few times that um, Allah sends us so much favors that it leaves us indebted towards Him. So you said a few times that Imam Hussain felt this feeling of indebtedness. Could it not be argued that the Creator has a duty towards the creation in the same way that you might say a parent has a duty towards a child? Yes, thank you. The way in which we understand the relationship between God and the creation needs to be revised. You see, if the naive way in which we are taught that God made us and brought us to this world, then God is duty bound to do everything for us and we are not indebted to God. In fact, God is indebted to us for creating us without our consent. It's like a parent saying or mother saying, I fed you and I clothed you and I washed you. She said to the mother, why did you bring me in this world? If you didn't want to do all of those things, why did you bring me? Can you see that? Why should I feel a sense of indebtedness to you? In fact, you should be indebted to me that without me wanting to, you brought me into this hell hole type of a world. So the relationship is a bit different. The relationship that Allah has with our humankind is the one that Hussein ibn Ali depicts most accurately. That, O oh Lord, 
I wanted the opportunity of life and that required you to create the heavens and the earth all the animals and the trees and the plants and the air and the water and you went out of your way for millions of years of handiwork and you created it all for me the analogy I give is this between us and Allah that it's a student who wants to study and get educated and graduate but the student is in a village and there is no educational establishments so the student pleads to a very benevolent person and that person then goes out of their way to create a whole town places a university therein creates a library different faculties different staff different professors and lecturers and instructors then sends the student there then the student educates his or herself then graduates this is the relationship we have with God yes and in the same way we have forced ourselves upon the womb of the mother that we have chosen and we have forced ourselves in the lap of a father that we have chosen and that is why we are always told to acknowledge the debt that we have to a mother and father because we chose that route to come through that mother and through that father and they had to sacrifice their lives to accommodate us in the journey of our life this is what Hussein teaches us is the most accurate way of understanding the relationship between us and God yeah? I've got a question regarding your advice on speaking to God. Um, if I was to give the example of speaking to a normal human being, if that human being can sense what I'm about to say before even saying it, I wouldn't necessarily then speak because then I would be speaking for the sake of speaking. So in regards to Imam Hussein's relationship with God and how I should speak with God, what, what advice could you give? We have to explore our individuality and individual relationship with God. Sometimes I need validation. So in order to get that validation, I need to express to my friend as if he is the other, even though he sees. So if God is my friend, but I require validation for him, from him to accept the act that I have committed, of which I'm not too sure, it might not even be the right act, but I need God to be there for me to validate me. As we, you know, on many occasions, we do things which are less than right. But we need a friend to validate us for that moment. These are human frailties. So at that point, we forget momentarily that God sees inside me before I speak it. Yes? At that point, we automatically create a distance between us and God. And we say to God, and we are justifying it to God, and God says, fine, it's justified. Once that stage is gone, then God says, now think about it again. Is it justified? But at stages, oh Allah, at this point, the speech has become silent. You see what is in me. You know better than I. You hear me in my silence. At times, what happens is that we say, ah, oh Allah. Can you see that? Even though he sees and feels the ah, but the soul has to give that ah, ah. Oh Allah, oh Allah, who do I have but you? And at times you say to Allah, oh Allah, these are my children, these are my parents, these are my family, these are my people, these are my community. Save us all, save us all. You can do that. So we explore our individuality with God. And as with that beautiful relationship that we have with our friend, we will have that relationship with God. Sometimes we speak, sometimes we are silent, sometimes it's inadvertent, sometimes it's well constructed, sometimes it's de deceptive, <laughs> sometimes it's pretentious. But we have to explore, explore all of this variety of relations with God. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. Um, Sheikh, could you, uh, my understanding, I hope, is the wrong 
um, I have stood wrong, but before I give chance to somebody else to uh, start to elaborate on it, you mentioned about Imam Hussein began to love his Lord. Can you elaborate on that, please? Yes. What I'm trying to say is, and I know some people can say, well, does that mean he didn't love his Lord? Yes? Now, as we progress in the journey of life, our love for our God deepens. Yes? There is always love of God in which we begin to trust God beyond ourselves. And then God becomes a proximate friend. But there comes a time where we begin to burn in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? That is the stage that I'm talking about. That stage of burning within Allah. To want to be totally consumed in the fire of this love. So these are different stages. We see the prophets going through this journey. Ibrahim, you are seeing him challenging the idols, getting into a lot of trouble, audaciously breaking the idol, then going into the fire, then being banished. But finally, Ibrahim comes of age, finally. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so nicely constructs the situation where he makes Ismail the object of his love. He actually makes Isma Ibrahim fall in love with Ismail. Do you know why? So that he can break Is Ibrahim fully and take him back. So he says, now this, the love of your life, give that away to me. So every prophet has also evolved in the love of God. Yes? Sorry if I step on anyone's toes. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Uh, you, you gave example, uh, you know, describing the relationship between two uh, people who fell in love. You know, sometimes can be blind love or even sometimes deaf. So, I mean, uh, to my understanding, this is maybe different than, you know, the relationship with God. Because sometimes, you know, if uh, two people fell in love, you know, blindly, that sometimes can have consequences. And all the gathering, actually, you know, young people here, maybe that's promoting this uh, kind of, uh, you know, criteria can, um, it goes the wrong way sometimes. So Let me explain. When we fall in love with people, we become like the people we fall in love with. What does that mean? We become as great as the person we fall in love with. Yes? But when we fall in love with God, what do we become? As great as the object of our love, as godly as God. Yes? So when people fall in love with each other, they begin to advocate each other's thoughts, policies, politics, philosophies. They begin to talk like each other, they begin to imitate each other and act like each other. They like the same foods as each other. They like the same entertainment as each other. Imagine if somebody fell in love with Allah. Allah has no limitations, no boundaries. You give him, as Allah says, you give him a gesture, he gives you a kingdom in return. Doesn't that Hadith Qudsi say? That if you come a step to me, I will come running towards you. Yes? He is not like a woman or a man that when we fall in love with, we get bored with afterwards. As soon as we fall in love with God, he expands his mysteries. He is an ocean unending. He is that beauty. If we fall in love with one glimpse, before we become acquainted with that glimpse, he gives us ten other glimpses. As Hussein says, and we'll discover this tomorrow, that, O oh Lord, you leave no peace for the hearts in yearning you. As soon as we come to a point of rest, you change it to make the hearts yearn you even further. So when we fall in love with God, we become like God. We become forgiving. We become full of clemency. We become gentle. We become loving. We become confident. Thank you. And uh, on that note, I think we should uh, close for tonight. We don't have time. Uh, so just a quick announcement then.
Uh, tonight's Majlis and Niyaz was sponsored for the Salih Swab of Marhum Afsal Hussain Valji, Marhuma Fatma Bai Ghulam Ali Kanani, Marhuma Khanum Sultan Akbarpur, Marhum Syed Hussain, Syed Hussain Husseini Nasab, Marhumin of Marhum Pirbai Walji Kanani family, Marhumin of Marhum Amersi Sundarji Mauji family, Marhumin of Marhum Habib Jagani family, Marhum of Durab Ali Muhammad Jafar Hussain Ali Megji, Marhumin of Marhum Muhammad Jafar Hassan Ali Megji family, Marhum Hussain Ali Bimji, Marhum Hassan Ali Hassam, Marhuma Shirin Bai Hussain Ali Bimji, Marhuma Fatma Bai Hassan Ali Hassam, almost done. Uh, Marhuma Rukaya Kasmali Daya Hirji, Marhum Nur Muhammad Hirji, Marhum Hussain Bimani, Marhuma Ashraf Bimani, Marhuma Masuma Bai Akbar Damji, Marhuma Sukaina Bai Manekia, Marhum Marhuma Farida Bai Mulina Rashid. Can we please keep these names in the presence of our hearts with the Surah Fatiha? On behalf of the Al Mahdi Institute, I would like to thank you all for attending tonight's lecture. The Al Mahdi Institute is a charitable, educational, and research establishment committed to serving grassroots communities through training future scholars of religion, engaging in cutting edge research and translations, as well as a wide range of outreach activities, all as a means of sharing the human face of Islam and the message of the Ahlul Bayt. As a grassroots funded organization, you're all welcome to donate to the Institute in whatever capacity you can to allow the Institute to continue its activities. If you'd like to hear more about our activities, you can also sign up to our mailing list located uh, on the table at the back outside the chapel, where our recent publications are also available for sale at special discounted rates. The Ahmadi Institute Library will now be open for an another half an hour after this program tonight and tomorrow night. Make sure to visit the library and to uh, benefit from the vast collection of Arabic, Persian, Urdu, and English literature. Tomorrow night's program will start with an earlier time of 4.40 p.m. So that's 4.40 p.m. with Jamaat Namaz, recitation of the Holy Quran, Mercia, lecture by Sheikh Arif, Matum, Ziyarat, and Niyaz. Finally, can you please all recite uh, Surah Fatiha for all Murhumin, and then after that, Niyaz will be served in the dining room, straight down at the end of the corridor. Fatiha. <laughs>